what up jerks we are going to be discussing how to build shark leaders we're going to cover everything so we got ty my guy out here what's up what's brother up? man we got chris in the background what, what is the first step to making a shark leader what do we do i lay everything out that i know i'm going to need i have an assortment of hooks here different hooks for different fish and i'm going after first thing i would do start with my mono i have 800 pound mono i'm going to get about 20 feet of it you get about 20 feet and then i'm going to cut it there you go first step you guys don't Gotta forget it. Get good crimpers. You can find these pretty cheap. They work great. I'm gonna place my crimp onto the mono. Okay. Again, 800 pound mono, and then my swivel. Okay. So there's two ways of doing it. You can loop it over and straight back through like that, or you can do it the offshore way. There's just different methods for different people. So you can stick it through twice, and then stick it back through the hole, going through the hole twice. Pull that tight, and then slide your swivel back onto that tag end, and there you go. Oh, nice, and this is the way to do it. I would prefer that you guys do it this way, it's we, stronger. We do it both ways. I like to have it twice through the swivel because it's just stronger, I think, in my opinion. We order the crimps offline at Catch All Tackle. And then I'm gonna crimp it. So when you crimp, especially on mono, you don't want to get the side because then it cuts into the mono. You just wanna get right in on the side like that. I crimp it three times, once on the outsides, once in the middle. Stay clear of the mono, you guys. Yep. I always leave just a little bit sticking out if you can see it right there. Yep. There we go. And this is the top where you tie your mono off onto. So you get your 200 pound mono, whatever you have on your rig, and you tie it off to this leader. And we're going to show you what goes on the rest of this. This video today is brought to you guys by lbsfguides.com and the perch jerker himself. We're not going to use this big clip on this one because of the crimp down at the bottom. So, we're going to use a smaller one. We slide it on and use smaller for this reason. When you slide it on and you drop this in the water on a kayak drop, you don't want it to go over that crimp. You want this to free float and move back and forth. So when a shark hits it, it doesn't feel that weight. It can just pull line. And then it stops right there at the crimp and you're good. The purpose of this swivel is for the weight. So you're gonna be clipping the weights onto here and then that way it can slide up and down the, the line. I'm gonna go back to this end. I'm going to slide my other mono crimp on and then I'm putting a 1200 pound swivel from mono to our cable leader. And I'm gonna do the same offshore technique as I did on the first one through twice. And then back through the mono twice. That's them good tips and tricks, you guys. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the Perch Jerker. Cinch it down and that's what you got. You might not need 1,200 pound, but why not? <laughs> Better safe than sorry. Exactly. And then I will crimp this. Leave a little bit on the edges. Yep. So you don't go into your mono. Use all your muscles. Big strong man. Right here, you got three crimps and you have a little bit of a tag in there. You don't want that. So what I do when I have a tag end, find a hard surface, sharp knife, and I get rid of it. Just like that. That way, when you're leadering this in, you don't want that mono coming into your hand because it hurts. It'll cut you. Yeah, it's mono, but it's still strong. It's 800 pound test, so. After that, we'll move on to our wire or cable. All right, and this cable is to, this cable is 900. This is our bite leader, so when a shark bites it, it doesn't cut through the mono or lose a shark. Yes. So 900 pound cable, and this is where the hook is when the shark bites onto the hook. This is gonna be the line that the shark's teeth can rub against, and that's what you want to be cable. You want it to be really strong. So I got 900 pound cable here, approximately 12 to 15 feet, because we have a lot of cutoffs out here, a lot of reef, rocks. So we like to stay on the safe side, and if it's gonna rub, it ain't gonna cut through this. Back to my 1200 pound swivel I'm gonna slide a crimp on there same ones from catch all tackle and with these this cable's pretty thick so i just loop it through just like that i try not to leave any tag in because this stuff will get in your hands splinters they hurt and then i'll push this through pretty good make a small little loop we like to use a cable too the coated cable we don't necessarily care that it's coated it just comes that way but some of the some places they'll use uh, just single strand steel. Yep. And then you got to worry about haywire twists and all that fun jazz. Crimping. This is easier to crimp. Crimping is always going to look better than haywire twist. You'll never change my mind on it. Especially seeing some people say haywire twists. You guys hear that? If you ain't crimping, you ain't pimping. And if you notice on this one, he went right to the edge. So with the I steel did. cable, you don't have to worry about it yep. like mono. The crimp won't cut through it like it will the mono. 
All right, there you go. So that scrimped on. All that's left is the hook. And now I'm this. going to run, what, this 20 aught first. With these, we've been running, we've been crimping all of our barbs down here recently. I mean, if you can keep the line tight, why have a barb? Makes for a quicker removal. Yeah, very too. easy to release. comes out a lot easier. So, what I'm gonna do, crimp it down. And so far we haven't had any... So right any there, all that happened is the crimp broke off. I'm fine with that, still an easy removal. The barb. So, push it through. Again, I don't do the offshore method with this cable, it's thick. Nothing's gonna cut it, break it. We've Where? yet to have a, a crimp fail. Yeah, on any part of the setup too. We've never pulled a crimp apart. I've always had line break, never had my... The reason we use the mono, it is a rub leader. So sharks will tail wrap themselves and stuff like that. And it'll still cut the mono, but it's less likely than our main line snapping. What's the best place to buy the 800 pound mono leader and the 900 pound cable? So everything we get is from Catch All Tackle. I mean, yep. it's cheap. Catch All it's Tackle. Easy. Shout it's out to reliable, Catch All Tackle. Yeah. It is reliable, so very reliable. So, this is the normal rig we would use when right. we're dropping down to the bottom. Look at that crimp, you guys, that's beautiful. And then boom, you have your hook on there, that's the end of the leader, and you got this hook to all yep. of the other stuff we just showed you. So, every now and then, when, for certain, certain sharks, got this from a good friend down in Texas, shout out to Spartan Tackle and Travis Spencer. So, we have rattles, and every now and then, we will take a rattle, put it at the top of our wire leader. We'll use rubber bands, zip ties, and we'll zip tie it on. It might work, it might not work. They say it attracts sharks. I've seen it, I believe in it, so it's... So I wasn't sold on it. And Travis and Spartan Tackle definitely is slowly changing my mind. So we're gonna run two <laughs> 80s today. One with a, a rattle and one without. Yep. There we're we gonna go. just see what happens. It These could are... be luck of the draw. And... Could be the rattle actually does something. This is what Tyler plays with when we're not out fishing. I think they work, man. I'm telling you, more noise in the water for the shark to hear. How could it not help? They're curious creatures. They hear some noise. They want to go check it out. They see a huge chunk of bait. Boom, you're hooked up. So these rigs, we wrap them up. Easy to store in gallon baggies. Keep them fresh, out of the elements until you're ready to use them. There you you can go. show them why we use a steel cable too. So when, oh, yeah. when you do catch a shark that has some gnarly teeth on it, shark teeth, we used the steel cable for this reason. <laughs> if that was mono, it'd be cut through and we would have lost that shark and then it would have a hook just hanging at its mouth. And that's the inside of the cable, you guys. That's this is, really strong stuff. A shark is not gonna chew through this. This is still 900 pound. All it, that cable is perfectly intact. There's no frays. The only thing that frays is a nylon coating on the outside. And it's stainless steel, so that's, that's not rusting. Yep. It's, it's perfect to use again. I'm about, awesome. to, I'm about to cut this take some wire off fresh wire and put the hook back on and we're gonna hook that yappy little dog up to it and send it <laughs> trig right here that we just rigged up this is for bottom fishing so if you're gonna hook some sputnik weights or breakaways whatever to that clip that we put on the mono then this is what you drag out to the ocean drop over the side of the, your kayak fly it out whatever you do and it goes straight to the bottom and you wait for the sharks to eat it so this is only one rig of about 10 different rigs that we run. This is what we run the most of, but this is for the bottom. We have float rigs. We have a ton of different ways of setting them up. And next time we are out thresher shark fishing or mako fishing, we will show you guys one of those rigs. Another trick Should be to, next week. He also is, uh, if you notice, he's not doing too tight of wraps because you don't want it to be stuck in little loops when you go to unspool it. This yep. stuff has a lot of memory. The so, wire yeah. doesn't, or the cable doesn't, but the mono does, so I make that's loose. as tight as we would go. We make loose loops. Um, belt, I wouldn't go any smaller than my hand, just like that. All right, there you guys go. That's the join right there in the middle where they come together. And there's your two leaders. You got this for your weights and everything. Hook on the bottom, there you guys go. That's a shark leader. So if you wanna make these catch all tackle, can get you all of this equipment right here. The upside, buy in bulk. It's buy way bulk. cheaper in the long run. Definitely. Always. If you're gonna get into shark fishing, you're gonna go through this stuff quick buy buy big spools it's way way cheaper and when you do do it we use he said do do uh, <laughs> when you do this we use a suitcase to keep all of our stuff these are all leaders these are all leaders we have float leaders in here thresher mako 
everything. A little bit special of ones for Texas where you can't use offset or stainless. So also know your shark fishing regulations. Yes, always they, know the regulations. Things that work that are okay in Cali are not okay in Texas. Yeah. And things okay in Texas are not okay in Cali. Even when it comes to baits. So here we can run yellowtail heads. In Florida, you have to keep the any game fish fully intact so you can prove the length, even if it is just bait. In Texas, you can't run game fish. So it's all different rules. If you have any questions about any of this, go down in the comments and drop the questions and we will try to keep up with you guys and let you know any questions you have. Remember, Catch All Tackle has all of this stuff available. This is lbsfguides.com, you guys. Hit that sub button, hit up the link in the description, cop some perch merch. If you don't wanna go through all this work, check out Spartan Tackle. They sell all of this stuff pre-made. You can get it with the rattles on it, everything. So yep. go check out Spartan Tackle. Check out your They're boy cheap. Spen, Travis Spencer. They're cheap, but it is quality. I stand by that stuff 100%. Yep. Go check them out. They catch right. some crazy sharks down there. Yeah, Spartan Tackle's gangster. Travis is cool. Let's get some skags, you guys. Peace.